On this episode of the Houndsman XP Podcast, I'm keeping it close to home by traveling just a couple of hours west to my old stomping grounds and interviewing fellow Indiana coon hunter Brian Lucas. Brian has been involved in breeding the same lines of dogs for the last 33 years. He's been hunting the same line, and they're all blue ticks, and they all come out of a common ancestry, Rambo II. We're going to dive deep into the influence that guys like Lonnie Smiley have had on the blue tick breed and how Brian Lucas and now his son Connor are carrying that heritage forward in the blue tick breed. The great thing about interviewing guys like Brian is that I get to learn. I hunt this line of dogs and I learned so much during this interview. You're going to hear how ignorant I am about the, the bloodlines of the very dogs that I hunt. But when I left, I found myself knowing a lot more about it. So we're going to dive deep into Rambo 2. We're going to talk about the dogs that have come after him. We're going to talk about the dogs that were before him. We're going to talk about a lot of blue tick stuff in this episode of the Houndsman XP podcast. I've been hunting a young dog out of Rambo 2, a descendant of Rambo 2. A few generations back, he's out of Racket Ridge Crash with my jazz female, and I've really been putting a lot of hunting on him here lately. And I'm seeing some good things. I've had some bad nights. But one of the things that hasn't let me down so far is I'm wearing and using the new Cajun blinder. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the blinder. L.W. Nixon has gone above and beyond on this light over at Cajun Lights and produced a light that is bright, functional, it's got a lot of cool features to it. It's got a built-in laser. And I was one of those guys that I didn't want one of those headlamps that had all the lights all the way around it and looks like something out of a freaking zombie movie or something like that. But I'm liking this blinder. And you can check out all of their lights by going to our webpage at houndsmanxp.com. And we are partnered with them now as Cajun dealers. So... Go to houndsmanxp.com. You can check out all of our merch over there and support this show by buying stuff from our website. Keeps us on the road, keeps us out there doing interviews like this and helping us all learn more about these hounds that we like to chase around so much. I'm excited to bring this interview to you and learn a little bit more about Blue Tick history. Let's get the tailgate down. It's time to dump the box. Oh, there's a lot of state ground here in yeah. Monroe County. Do you guys go into Brown County and hunt Yellowwood? And Some. There's getting to be a lot of rattlesnakes mm -hmm. and stuff over there, so I don't want to risk. What other state grounds in, in Monroe County here? Uh, there's Hoover well, the National the Forest. Yeah, you got the reservoir. Then Yellowwood Forest. Then Morgan Monroe State Forest. Oh, that's right. North. Morgan Monroe. Morgan Monroe's a hellhole, though, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, so, cut that, so, <laughs> they cut that sucker over. We uh, take recruits down, down there because it was public ground. It was just a big place. That was horrible hunting down there. Mike Mike Shepard met us down there. He had hunting. Um, might have been hunting Goomba, and Goomba looked good that night. Looked a lot better than the junk I was hunting. I can't remember what I was hunting. Might have been hunting my boondog at that time. There is a lot of roads through there, so you don't... You, you know. got... What is that? Uh, 135 running on the west side of it. Now it's 69, I think. Or 37 that runs... 37, that was it. Yeah. And I was a nervous wreck. I was sitting there <laughs> watching my Garmin. We cut the dogs loose, and they're going. And they're trailing out of here, and I'm looking on my Garmin, and it shows 37 in front of us, and I was just like, holy smoke. So I'm I'm trying to get on the button and get them back in. Which they got a pretty good fence now that that's cutting off the, you know. Yeah, the interstate. Yeah. 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 I'm going to eat some donut. You guys go ahead and do this podcast. Just start <laughs> talking about uh, your hunt last night and all that stuff. Uh, hmm? Wasn't much to talk about. <laughs> Made a couple of den trees and took some minus on a bad call. But took a what? Took some minus on a bad call. Your bad call or the judge's My bad call? My bad call. I do that all the time, Connor. That's why I don't competition on anymore. The problem was, I was the judge, too. So. <laughs> I got myself scratched at Blue Tick Days. The first year I hunted jazz, I was a judge, 
and I had to scratch myself because I we had another dog in the cast that sounded just like her. Yeah, and struck her wrong the first time, and gave myself the warning. <laughs> and uh, who was it? it? Was a uh, is it Chad Brown from Wisconsin? Maybe he was hunting a dog named Oak that he called Oak, and I struck struck Jazz. He's like, nah, I think that's Oak. This is before I had hearing aids, before I confessed to the fact that I was getting old. And uh, he's like, no, I got my Garmin out and Jazz is behind me. And I struck a dog over here. I was like, well, yeah, you're right. And then she opens behind me. So I took a hundred pump and then I got on the card for a hundred behind us. Because he didn't strike his dog off. Yeah. He was just worried about me making sure I didn't get my points. And then I struck behind me. So I, I came back even, but. It went like that until I had to scratch myself. <laughs> yeah, no, I uh, I struck for a hundred and treat for a hundred and a quarter. And I guess you wasn't done moving it. <laughs> <laughs> you bet, man. I'll tell you what, I've been there before. Well, we're in Unionville, and uh, we're sitting down with Brian and Connor Lucas. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about something that doesn't get enough love. You get we've all, we're all hardheads. Because we're trying to do this the hard way. We're trying to make blue ticks famous. Why didn't we just start hunting walkers and then we could just fit in with everybody? <laughs> well, I've always thought, you know, just breed for a pleasure dog that you can enjoy all week and then get a good enough one you can go to the hunts and win on the weekends. I like hunting a coon dog first. Exactly. I can't stand to hunt something that I don't like hunting through the week. I got to have a coon dog, not not be a good enough handler to cover up. Well, there ain't no way I'm a good enough handler. I know I'm not. <laughs> I know I'm definitely I'm not. not. <laughs> yeah. But the reason I, I wanted to come over here and talk to you guys is because, <clears throat> I mean, you guys have been heavily involved in in breeding your own, your own line of blue ticks for you know, the last 33 years. You had access to guys like Lonnie Smiley and, and Rambo and you had Rambo here for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I think he was here for two and a half or three years on a lot of nights. You got to hunt Ram the original Rambo or Rambo two? Rambo two. Okay. Never hunted with Slops Rambo. Mm hmm What kind of dog was Rambo two? Let's just start right there. Let's just start talking about because I mean that dog I want to talk about what type of dog he was. And why, you know, um, he really never got that recognized until the last five to ten, you know, five years or so. Ten years, maybe. Um, but let's start with talking about what type of dog Rambo 2 was. Most guys that got to hunt with him in a hunt, you know, they would describe him as a blue tick walker style. You mm -hmm. know, he'd get in there, get treed, loud, you know, stay no matter what. He was just flashing. when you say stay, no matter what. But, <laughs> all right, let's let's. Uh, he could take some fang pressure. Yeah, he could take it. Did he dish any out? Not that I ever seen, as far as you know, being aggressive. Everybody, you know, that's the big thing. Rambo, you know, mm -hmm. you know. I think of Sylvester Stallone with that big knife, right? But, but but I've never seen much mean out of him. Could you hunt young dogs with him? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You didn't We're, have, you never had any problems like that. No, no, no. Was he ever scratched for fighting? Not that I recall. <laughs> what is this? What? Is, not that I recall. Is this the Iran Contra hearings? <laughs> call, call you Oliver North? Not that I can recall. Well, I was a young man back then. <laughs> I don't remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So when when you say Walker style, I mean, I mean, let's break that down a little bit because the reason I hunt blue ticks is because they're not Walker style. Well, I mean, and I don't have any. I was, I used to. I've had Walkers. I've hunted all colors. They had the track speed and the drive, the hunt mm -hmm. to get in there, you know. And I think that's why Rambo two reproduced so well is because I think he produced better than himself. Mm -hmm. You know, and he reproduced that drive and that hunt and put a loud mouth on him. And he was real flashy, really good looking dog. 
You know, there's not a whole lot of pictures of him, but was he put up good? Oh yeah, yeah. Tight feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was really dark and had the dark red trim on his legs. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was full blanket back. Uh, I don't think was Rambo he? too was. He threw a lot of blanket back dogs, mm-hmm. but uh, he had a lot of black on him. Yeah, so he was one of the darker. He was really dark. Now, Smiley's Levi, full brother, he was a lighter collar dog. Mm-hmm. What was his name? Smiley's Levi. Levi, mm-hmm. yeah. And he was he was a great dog, too. I didn't get to hunt with him a lot, but he just didn't have the looks that Rambo 2 had. What set him apart? And I'm not trying to throw... How do we do this without throwing anybody under the bus? <laughs> <clears throat> trying to figure this out as we, we're on the fly here, but... Um, when you say he's not a typical blue tick, I think a lot of people, you know, automatically think blue ticks are, you know, grubbing tracks out of the ground and you know, we've all heard the term blue ticking and stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. <clears throat> and, um, when, when we describe a dog, like you're talking about, like Rambo too, I mean, I, I hate doing it like Walker style, but we've kind of earned it as blue tick or blue tick guys, you know, cause, mm-hmm. cause I think a lot of times when a, we finally see a dog that can actually move a track and it's different, then it's kind of amazing. You know what I mean? Well, most guys don't even, can't even comprehend, you know, moving a track. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not, I don't want to badmouth anybody. And I don't want to sound like elitist here, but you know, when I see things about cold nosed dogs and all this stuff, you know, a lot of times those are just dogs that simply can't run a track. Exactly. They got to have the brains and the nose has got to be connection in between there. And, and the track speed is a big part of, Mm -hmm. you know, this line of dogs. Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to bark in the same place over and over and over. Oh, what what would he do? What would what would a dog like Rambo to do? You hunted him a bunch. What would he do if he had like just a total breakdown on a track where he had track loss? You know, he he just got to a point. What he'd probably just blow on through there. He's I gonna mean, pick his head up. And he's gonna go. He's gonna call that track, and he's gonna go find the next one. Yeah, and what? I didn't I didn't really care for that much, <clears throat> but I mean he would you know. You were pretty well, you would turn him loose and you were walking to a tree and you'd turn him loose and you were walking to another tree. Mm-hmm. It was just. Was he picking his tracks or was he, was he. There may have been other tracks in between. <laughs> the <good> yeah. Tracks. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he picked his tracks for what, for what he could get treed on? I, I think whatever he hit, I think he could just fly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Rambo three, I think was maybe faster on track than he was. Yeah. And that's what impressed me so much. And that's why I wanted a pup out of Rambo 3. I wanted a female pup out of Rambo 3. Mm-hmm. And I paid for a female pup out of Rambo 3 and Face. And it was four months old. And Jeremy Smiley showed up here. And when he pulled that female pup out of the box. It grew, it a, pen- it grew a penis <laughs> between here and Oklahoma. <laughs> it had nuts. <laughs> I said, whoa. <laughs> I said, uh, look. Maybe it identified as a female. I And I was, you know, I was there. when This the breed- was back in the olden days, so they couldn't have been doing that. No, I don't think. <laughs> it is Bloomington. <laughs> Let's say Unionville. I don't want to admit we're this close to Bloomington. But, uh, you know, they pulled him out of the box. And I'd get, you know, 500 bucks was a lot of money back then for a puppy. What year would have that been? Goodness. I think it was two thousand. It was a two thousand model. Maybe, yeah, twenty five years ago. Yeah, thereabouts. Amazing. And uh, doesn't seem like it, that can even be possible. And and I was standing. You know, I I was there for most of the breedings for all the. I was just there. I was at Kevin's all the time. And uh, they pulled him out of the box, and I said, you know, hey, I paid for a female six months ago, and Kevin had the money ready, and he handed me the money back. He said, "There's your money back." Lonnie said. You are to hunt this dog, and that's it. So, and that was Bobo. Bobo. Yeah. We're going to get to Bobo. I want to talk about Bobo quite a bit, and I want to talk about, like, Kevin's frosty dog and stuff like that. But uh, 
I want to get back to the the Rambo part of it be, because <clears throat> what are some of the dogs that came out of came out of Rambo too? Oh gosh, you got Bocephus. No, Bodacious. R.J. Bodacious was out of Rambo too, and Bodacious was Bocephus, sire. Bocephus came out of Bodacious. What else you got? Uh, R.J. Mm-hmm. Rambo two and Heather. Um. Colby, mm -hmm. Rambo 2 and Heather. Uh, was it Clyde? Which Clyde? Uh, he was out of that same litter, Rambo 2 and Heather, I think. A little bit, Rambo 2 and Heather. Yeah. Uh, my fancy female, Rambo 2 and Frosty. Yeah. Uh, Bogey. I don't know that dog. Uh, I think he was out of sugar. Rambo to and Sugar, then the Hoss Dog. Uh, Just a bunch of good dogs. A bunch of Grand of Nights. Yeah. yeah. This, and you could you could be at Autumn Oaks, and you know how many dogs are at Autumn Oaks. Mm -hmm. And if there was 50 dogs out of Rambo 2 up there, you could walk around that fairgrounds, and you could pick out Guarantee every, it. every single one of them. I do that with Country Puffs now, and, and stuff and, that's out of Bocephus a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, I don't, it's like a dominant... And I was up there walking around with Lonnie, and he'd say, that one right there, that one right there. Right. You know? Right. And he'd just have a, you know, heck of a time. And a lot of fun walking around with Lonnie. Yeah. Well, so when you're talking about the Rambo 2, why, why has it taken so long for kind of that, that bloodline to be, to be recognized? I mean, I rec I I had I know to, you I had did. to dial on it a long time. Ago. I know you did, but <laughs> but it didn't seem like a lot of people. Right. Did. Well, I mean, big countries, you know, blowed it up. I think more than anything. Yeah, but Bodacious is still, or Bocephus is still, and he's still the number one historical reproducer right now. I think he is. I mean, you look at what Bocephus produced out of Rambo too. You know, big country, oxy cotton, or no, um, Botox. Um, um, there's a, uh, that bow female that, um, um, the guy down in Louisiana's got, I mean, there's a bunch of them that came off of Bocephus. And when you put it with that, um, Robert Shelton's cotton oxy, we took a picture of all the Grand Knights, I think Donnie Donnie was in the picture with with Robert. And so I don't. I might have taken the picture. I can't remember. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to see if Donnie still got that. But all the pups that came out of Cotton Oxy and Bocephus. I think there's seven dogs, and they're all Grand Knights. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Impressive. Oh yeah. 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 Big time. Yeah. Now what was the female? Now what's the female that they're out of that Ryan had? Up here in Indiana. Which one? Who? Which dogs they're out of? I think she's back in... I don't know. He'd got her off Richie, I believe. Oh, Richie McDonald? Ryan Schweitzer. I her. don't know. Okay. You're the blue tech expert. I'm here to learn. <laughs> You're, I'm just here to learn, Ryan. I may be getting old. Yeah. But... Uh, Donnie, Donnie is the guy that, that can sit there and look at those papers. I mean, he's got it all right here. And I tried to get him to go around with me to do these to do these uh, podcasts about blue ticks because I don't know that much about – I know certain lines yeah. and, and certain veins, but it's only stuff that I've been involved with. I can't tell you what Perry Vesley's stuff is out of and and – all, you know these these outliers, or not the outliers, the the big time guys that I just haven't hunted their stuff. Perry Vesley's no outlier, that's for damn sure. But, uh, uh, but so when we talk about the Rambo line, what do you guys think about people that are still referring to dogs as Rambo line? <laughs> yeah yeah how long's rambo 2 been dead well a little bit a while <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah how much bit. other stuff's been bred in and crossed over and 
or Lonnie would say watered down. Watered down. <laughs> <laughs> he might use a little more graphic term than that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think I got five generations going. So you probably have as concentrated stuff as you probably, you might have more than what Jeremy's got. You do have more than what Jeremy's got. Probably. Yeah. Cause Jeremy told me, um, uh, I was talking to him one time. He's, I think he referred me to you actually. It's like, you need to talk to Brian Lucas. He knows more about Rambo stuff than I do. I said, you're a smiley. He goes, I know, but I wasn't always, I didn't carry them on the family tradition sometimes. You know, I don't remember how he said it, but it was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, I was 15, 16 years old hunting six nights a week with Rambo two, Heather, you know, Frosty, Patch, all those dogs, Max. How old were you at the time? Uh, 16? Yeah, probably 16. Just going every night. Yeah. Down yeah. here in these. And I want to talk about where we're at. We got to talk about that. We we were talking about this before we post the button. But anybody that thinks that Indiana is flat, cornfields, and a coast, uh, a coon on every light pole and fence post needs to come down to where we're at right now. I mean, this is big country that I think if you blindfolded anybody and took it off of them just east of here, just a little bit, and unblindfolded them, they would have no idea where they were at. They would say Tennessee. They would say Kentucky. They would say West Virginia. I brought a lot of folks up here from those areas that are like, that have just flat told me. It's like, if we knew we were hunting here, we wouldn't have come to Indiana. Yeah. I've heard a lot, hunted of this unhappy, at home. a lot of unhappy casts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put one guy in the hospital for three months. <laughs> about what i he slipped in a creek and landed flat of his you know on the on the flat rock and we had about had to carry him out yeah if he spent spent that much time in the hospital i'm surprised he didn't airlift him i'm glad i would don't connor you can't slip if we go hunting you can't slip yeah. I'm, we're just gonna have to like put you out of your misery Wait, right man. there in the creek as big, <laughs> big a fella as you are <laughs> yeah i ain't carrying him out <laughs> So, out of all those dogs, though, I mean, what what dogs do you like, and did you like the most? Let's talk about let's talk about you know from from Rambo two on now. I mean, it's obviously you you like that bloodline. You said he thought he produced better than than himself. The Houndsman XP podcast is fueled by Joy Dog Food. Joy Dog Food has a rich tradition of supporting the Houndsmen of America. Founded in 1945, Joy is proud of its history and the relationship it has built with the American Houndsmen. And in 76 years, there's never been a recall. Made with 100% American-made high-quality ingredients, Joy Dog Food has one of the highest calorie-dense formulas on the market. For 76 years, this Made in America product has kept hunting dogs in the field day after day, season after season. And when we say Made in America, Joy has a long track record of fighting for American freedoms by being on the front lines against the animal rights movement and their extremist tactics. Joy will fuel your hounds and fight for your freedoms, fueled by Joy. The most comprehensive mapping system in the world is available by going to onxmaps.com and downloading their app. Several subscription offers there. Highly recommend you use an Onyx. And here's a true story for you. We've all got that spot where when we turn our hound loose at night, they're going to head that direction. Well, the other night, my hounds headed in a direction for that property that had recently sold. I had no idea who owned that property. I simply opened up my Onyx app, found the landowner information, cut the dogs off, and the next day I went to their house. And not only did I get permission to hunt there, I think I made some new friends. They are beef farmers and they do not like raccoons running through the feed bunks, leaving their mess behind. Yeah. Go to onxmaps.com and download the app today at checkout. Make sure you use the promo code HXP20 and get 20% off. 
When you join us on Patreon, you will get a discount code for a deeper discount on Onyx Maps. Know where you stand with Onyx. The Houndsman XP podcast only endorses products that we would use ourselves. And I do use Elite Nutrition supplements. Elite Nutrition offers supplements for your horses, your mules, your dogs, and even you. These all-natural products work with your dog's natural immune system and its normal natural body function, not to treat symptoms, but to fix problems. Stop pumping pharmaceutical toxins into yourself or your dogs and start using these all-natural products that work with the perfect system that God gave you. Go to tryelitenutrition.com and check out their products for wound care, prebiotic, probiotic, puppy stuff. It's all there. Parasite control. If you expect extreme performance, you need elite nutrition. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I blame most of it on, on those females that Lonnie raised out of Hawk and Rock Ann. You know, you had Frosty, mm -hmm. Grand Knight. That's ha Kevin's. Kevin Leach's Kevin's Frosty dog. Yeah, she was. What was her full name? Frosty Leach's Frosty. Leach's Frosty. Mm -hmm. I drew her more than once, but one night in particular, Kevin Kevin pulled a good one on me. We were hunting somewhere down over here, and and uh, he had a bunch of feeders out, and I was hunting a pretty fair. I I was actually hunting a walker that was a walker, not a blue tick that wanted to be a walker, and uh, he was a pretty fair dog, and. Uh, she kept getting struck on me, and I was like, what in the world is going on? You know, she wasn't leaving us barking, but she would get in there, and boom, she was getting struck and treed on me. And we walk in there, and we shine the tree, and I'm like, what in the world is going on? This is a nice dog. And then I about tripped over one of his feeders. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, mm-hmm, this is what's going on. He was really good at setting them, too. He'd set them up a little side holler or something oh, yeah. like that. You know, he, he wouldn't just drop them out there in the middle of middle of the path right right yeah he but frosty was a nice dog i don't care whether she oh, she was getting hunted yeah. on feeders or not no i had night after night she was the same dog too it wasn't she didn't have highs and lows she was steady yeah yeah and how was frosty frosty bred again she was out of hawk and rock Ann. okay yeah so you had frosty and patches as kevin had and then he had another male for a time and he was a night champion i think they called him trey and those were white dogs those mm -hmm. were white blue ticks well frosty uh, was pretty light she was white yeah yeah and then lonnie had angel which was a grand knight out of hawk and rock Ann, and that's what heather came out of and then he had misty hawk and rock Ann, which that's that produced rambo two, smiley's levi and uh but that was that was probably I think the first best cross in the blue tick. You know when you say best cross or whatever, you know you got RC and Jenny was a really good cross, sure. and but that produced an absolute ton of title dogs that reproduced. Gage and Alice. That was another would be another one of those crosses you consider one of the great crosses too. Right. So, but Rock and. Say it, it was Hawk and what? Hawk and Smiley's Rock Ann. Smiley's Rock Ann. Now, what was what was Rock Ann out of? What was she out of? Was she out of Rambo too? Or no, no, she was she was so it was Rock Ann, and they had Misty, and then Misty had Rambo too. Okay, so she was. See how ignorant I am. No, Brian, this no. is why I'm here talking to you. That's man. that's way back. Heck, we're talking fifty years ago. Yeah, yeah, had no clue. So, wow. hmm. maybe not 50 years ago. But I bet it was. I, I actually, he had, so the first time me and Kevin ever went down to Lonnie's and hunted with him, we hunted with him two weeks. He'd go down there, drop everything, take you hunting every night. Just absolute great guy. Where was he living at the time? Leslie, Arkansas. Okay. Rocks, where, where Jeremy lives? Shell Rock. I think, no, I don't think Jeremy lives there now. I think he's south. Oh, okay. But it's awful hunting. <laughs> shell rock where lonnie is, was or where jeremy where is? lonnie was oh yeah yeah but we got down there and i think there was four grand knights running loose in the yard <laughs> and then the neighbor called and 
He said, uh, Heather's treed up here, and I think it's a bobcat. He said, I'll just leave her alone. She'll come home. And Heather was a grand night. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what RJ and Little Bit and, mm-hmm. and all those dogs was out of. Yeah. 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 Before she had them. Yeah. How old was, was she at the time? Three or four. A year and a half or two years old. Oh, that young. Oh, she was young. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah. Like I say, Misty and Angel, they were just laying on the porch. I was, I've was. i always been too scared to let old dogs run loose like that. Oh, me too. You know, yeah. I I kind of have a theory about, you know, training dogs. And once they're doing what they need to be doing, then they don't get the opportunity to to go out and choose what they want to do. You know what I mean? I, I want them to dial in. Well, I mean, just, if they get takes, older, I, it takes I'm so much of your time to, to get them to where that point. Right. And and getting that blood and that cross is part of it, but I mean, you just got so much time, and, and time is what's worth something nowadays. I wonder how the old timers did it, though, where you know the dogs would just lay up under the porch and they'd holler them out when it's time to go hunt, and the rest of the time they just sat, you know, laid around and and I wonder how they did that. They just the dumb ones didn't make it. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you you know you heard the old old stories and stuff about. The hounds just being being around the homestead, and then then at night when it got dark, yeah. they'd come out and they'd holler them out from underneath the porch or out of the barn. And they'd come flopping ear down through there and be like, "Hell, yeah, okay, okay, let's go run a coon." And you probably don't hear all the times that they were over at the neighbors killing the chickens and stuff because the they'd shoot them. Yeah. Well, I think that's another plus about our dogs. I think that dog wants to please you and it's going to fall in line with what you're doing Mm -hmm. you know when you're training that young dog and he's that special dog i think you know he's reading you and you're reading him or her and and they're doing what you're doing whether it's laying under the porch all day or or when you let them out of the truck they go jump in your truck without you touching them you know you don't have to take a lead and put on them and and fight them all the way to the truck and drag them up in in the truck right gonna you know when i had fancy I never touched her. You open the open the kennel door and she runs and gets in the truck. You know, you turn her loose and you point the way you want her to go. And and then when you get from the tree, you know, you're done tree. You say, Come on. And she follows you out and jumps back in the truck. And then when you're done hunting, you drop the tailgate and she goes and gets in her kennel. Yeah. That, I learned a lot of stuff. Um, one of the good things about producing this podcast is being able to travel all over and see how I was always that rockhead that, you know, would go over to the kennel and grab him by the collar and let him drag you to the truck and then put them in the truck. And then you get him out of the truck and you let him drag you to the woods and then you drag him off a tree. You know, I was always good about teaching one to lead and stuff like that. But, but man, I've, I've hunted with guys out West that they're sitting there looking at a mountain lion or a bobcat in a tree across a canyon and they haul, you know, they just yell at them. We're done. Boom. They start peeling off there. And they might have to tone them a little bit, you know, just bit to audible tone. Uh, I'm sure that they had some e-stem going on there at some point, you know, to get them to that point. But but they they wa- handle these dogs with, with no leashes most Bo- of the time. Bobo was that way. Never had. I, and I may, have, I may have bumped him one time, no toning. And it didn't matter what was going on, what he was doing. You hollered at him, he'd come back to you. No mm-hmm. matter what. I mean... We turned loose one time down, and he got way deep. And me and Kevin were walking to him, and I think we were walking an hour, you know. And finally got there, and he's down in a big deep holler. And Coon, you know, he said, "Call that sucker out." He said, "Let's get out of here." I said, <laughs> you guys well, are trespassing. No, it's, oh, you guys sure. were in the Brown Cane no. State Park. I hadn't talked. Like, let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I said, "We'll shoot the coon out." He said, if you shoot that coon out, he said, you're going to have to crawl down in that holler and get him. I said, no, I'll call him out. He said, there's no way. I said, any amount of money you want to bet, shoot it out, and I'll call him off the coon while he's fighting it. He Did said, it. Okay. And what so, happened? So he rolled the coon out. I hollered, Bobo, come on. And he stopped fighting the coon, and it ran off. And I hollered again, and he was right at my feet, and Kevin never paid the bill. <laughs> <laughs> what did, how much did he put down? 
He said a hundred bucks, didn't he? Two. Two hundred bucks, and yeah. he never paid never out? paid the bill. Oh man! But it was probably worth two hundred not to have to crawl down in there and get him. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. Yeah, it's the the dogs are capable of a lot more than than what we give them credit for, you know, and that's what. We've tried to talk about that a lot on this podcast. It's like, you know, just because somebody's been doing it the same way for the last 150 years doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. There's other there's other ways to do things, too. And and um, I think we're seeing a lot, lot more people. I always wanted to break one. You know how it says, uh, you know, dogs are handled on leash or whatever. I always just wanted to break one so that you put them, put the leash on their collar and then they... They they hold the leash in their mouth and walk beside you out. That'd be fun. Yeah, I've never got there yet. Yeah, I haven't either. I'm, <laughs> I, I think you can only you, you start putting too much in these dogs' brains, and then they forget what they're really supposed to be doing. Well, it depends how much you're hunting too. Mm-hmm. You know, back then we were hunting six, seven nights a week. Yeah, and now <laughs> we're <Why> not. not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a mission right now. I've got the. Um, I started this past week uh, on Wednesday, and I'm going to put 30 days on that crash and jazz pup I got. And I'm on, I'm recording it, so I'm videotaping the whole thing. I'm, I'm doing going to make a YouTube series out of it and show where we're at right now. And I've, I've you always see the superstars on on YouTube, oh, yeah. you know, and on Facebook. I'm going to show the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm showing it all. I mean, this this idiot's been bear hunted and everything else. He's walking along beside me. But the third night in, he's already figured out that when I turn you loose, you need to go. And it's just a difference in mindset, you know, just, just a little. So he's already making progress. But I think by the end of 30 days, he's going to look completely. People will be able to see on the videotape or on the on the on the videos the changes he's made that'd be great and probably help a lot of people as far as because mm-hmm. the young people there's a lot of people that hunt a heck of a lot harder than i do these days i'm not gonna lie man it's i've got a grandson you know running business <clears throat> and anymore man when it starts getting dark i start getting sleepy <laughs> my my clock was always it's just I've I've had to switch trying to switch myself over to night shift. You know I'm not Connor that works all night every night and then hunts on his you know after he gets off work and before he goes. Yeah, he's tougher than I am for sure. He gets rough after life. it, huh? It's, it's a rough life. <laughs> when are you going to get switched up and go to a different shift? Uh, not real sure. You don't know? Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's whenever a job opens up. Well, Connor, how long you been hunting? You've been hunting your whole life. Uh as long you one of those kids that got carried in the woods when you're a little? On and off. Yeah. Yeah. We uh Dad never really hunted too hard when we were little. But then uh, you know, after I got my driver's license and stuff, I come home, there's a new dog in the pen and he yeah. ordered me a new light and a pair of boots and I've have them turn back. So, most people I know, we've talked to people like this before, that grew up with it. It was kind of a, when you get to when you get to that age where you got your. My parents never asked me where I was. Yeah. When I was hunting, they didn't. I didn't have a curfew. There wasn't a time I was supposed to be home. But that came with you know responsibility. If I'd have got caught saying I was coon hunting and got caught at some party, you know, then, then those rules would have changed. I'm not saying I, I didn't live a, you know, perfect life by any means, but, (laughs) but, but, you know, for the most part, I would rather have hunted than, than run around partying and everything else. We used to play football on Friday night. I remember Kevin, um, Kevin Bennett and I, we had a big game and we won it. And, uh, we're out there on the field celebrating. He goes, let's go coon hunting after we get home. We just played football, you know, and I'm like, okay, and we, we go coon hunting the rest of the night, you know, that's, that's the kind of, everybody else was running off to noble Romans and stuff like that. And we, we end up going coon hunting. 
So most people will tell you we need to get a life, I guess. Yeah. But it's been pretty good to me. Yeah. So what do you what do you like about it? What what keeps you going? Just everything about it, really. You know, uh, another aspect is, I think if I didn't go, my dad would probably kick me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. Do you feel a little bit of an obligation seeing all the generations of hounds? Do you ever feel that? Do you feel like you're uh, obligated or you want to have visions of carrying that on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, I don't know. He's he's put so much work into it and all the guys before him uh, kind of feel obligated to carry it on mm-hmm. until someone else picks it up, you know? Yeah. Maybe waiting a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? 21. Girlfriend? Hey. So, it may be a while. You're right, Brian. <laughs> it may be a while. Don't be getting a rush, man. There's yeah. plenty of time. Plenty of time. So, you're on what generation right now? Five generation, fifth generation, you think? Mm, five or six. Six. Yeah. Let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Bobo. How does that all tie back through? I'm, I mean, I'm seeing where you got eight week, twelve week old pups out here? Uh, the young ones are out of Smiley Steve. Okay, which out of Big Country. Yeah, and uh, Jeremy's fancy female, which she went back to Screwy Louie. Mm-hmm. Another one out of Rambo too. I don't think we mentioned earlier. Yeah, we didn't mention Screwy Louie, but uh, and one of the good ones. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the bigger ones. Um, then I got. Pups out of three different litters out of Bobo out there. Semen? Semen pups? Yes. Most of those dogs out there are out of Bobo. Right. Are the females and... So those young pups are the only ones that are don't go back to Bobo. Well, they do. <laughs> Let's get into it, man. <laughs> I feel like it's, I need a crowbar here. To... It's... it's... It's kind of tight. That's all right. <laughs> you know, so the female that they're out of mm-hmm. was out of Funky Monkey 2. And a female, the last female I had out of Bobo and Ann, which Ann was out of RC and Jenny. Mm-hmm. And that was, I would say, probably the best cross I made on Bobo was Bobo and Ann. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that produced a, a lot of good dogs. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of reproducers, you know, as far as the females go. So I'm just trying to keep what I had, you know, what we had when we were young. Yeah. Hunting with Rambo too so much and Frosty and and my fancy female, I feel like was that's what I'm going back for. If I could get another one like old fancy. But do you want to go backwards? Do you want to go? Do you think she was a better dog than what you got today? So yeah, yeah, fancy was she'd get it done. You know, you know, do you know Jim Ridge? Oh yeah. You know, yeah. You know, Jim always he never collect he he would never collect his male dogs. He said if I've got to go backwards then I'm not Lonnie was the same way. That's mm-hmm. why I three different times I begged Lonnie to let me draw Rambo too. Mm-hmm. I said, please. I said, I'll pay you a stud fee on every time we draw him. Mm-hmm. Just please, can I draw him? He said, you can't hunt a dead dog. Hmm. But what would that be worth now? Yeah. I guess what I'm what I'm trying to get at, Brian, is is if if we're still trying to. I mean, when do we move out of the good old days to? To moving forward, I guess that's isn't that our goal as breeders is to keep moving forward and hope we get better than what we had the previous generation, or is better just different? That's that's a big question, I think. Well, I think that might be a downfall too. Better or different? Mm-hmm. If you're getting better, that's fine, but don't do it just to be different. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I mean, what I had back then suited me down to the ground. And I wouldn't have changed a thing about Fancy. So what you have now, does it suit you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Miss Rambo's. She's a nice female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you are making you are making progress as far as what your goals are as well, for I, your... Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, if if I didn't think I was doing justice to it, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm-hmm. So what are the things that – what? Do you, and I don't want to put you on the spot here. I don't want you picking your own dogs apart. But, <laughs> um, you know, when you look at making these crosses – You've got you've got all this historical stuff. I mean, I was looking at a set of papers there that you sent me that had some big time. I mean, it, they were nice papers. You got Richie McDonald's decon dog in there, and what all was in that? I'm gonna look back at it. Oh, that's probably out of sugar. I got a I got a sugar. She's out of big country, and then she's out of Perry Metcalf's Remy female. Yeah, yeah. I saw Metcalf's. Uh, which, well, Perry's stuff in there, which I think that's doubled up on on RC and Jenny also. Which RC was out of my fancy female and running bullet, and then and oh, did I get flack for doing that? You got Bodacious and Sadie. You got Decon and Tally Ho, Robert Shelton's Tally Ho dog. Tally, that's the dog Ryan Schweitzer had. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what the, that's what uh, Cotton Oxy came out of, isn't it? That's what I was, yeah, that's oh, what I, I was you. getting at. Yeah. Because he, Ryan would bring Tally down and hunt all the time. And then you got Northern Blue, you got the killer dog. Um, And I don't really know much about those dogs. Well, any of that Northern Blue stuff either came from Ron Taylor or did Ed put any Northern Blue on his stuff or was that all Dave? Probably just Dave. Yeah. Yeah. And now Ken Herman is carrying that, that stuff on. But that's back in the day. You know, that's that goes back a ways. Yeah. Uh-oh, we got the book of knowledge out. Well, I was trying to pull that the papers you were just talking about out because I, I can't. The the Rambo dogs, you know, I was over at Kevin's all the time, and, and most of those breedings I was there for. I said, you know. Did Kevin have Rambo or did you have him here? Kevin had him. Okay. Yeah. Kevin I, was had just, him. I was just young. I was just 15, 16 years yeah. old. No way Robert, Robert Shelton was, or uh, Lonnie, Lonnie, yeah. Lonnie was giving you that dog. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Coon hunting this week, chasing girls next week. No way. <laughs> so when you, when you start talking about, you know, breeding and stuff like that, then, um, how do you decide? How do you decide what crosses you're going to make? You know, you've got this line of dogs. You know what their strengths are. You know what their weaknesses are. If you're going to take one of your females and breed, then then what are you looking for? How do you evaluate your females to make sure that you're? Well, Connor's more into the dogs as far as I mean. I used to. You go hunting with them and mm-hmm. maybe hunt ten or fifteen nights, and you could see what they were. Because yeah. you can't go with a dog one night and judge anything. Right. I don't. I don't think. Other than maybe how good their mouth is. Mm-hmm. But you know, used to I knew. You know, you'd hunt with them thirty nights or sixty right. nights or whatever. But uh, I mean, the females that we're keeping, we keep the good ones, mm-hmm. and we don't keep the ones that aren't good. <laughs> Well, Connor, what are you the guy? Then you come home and you tell you tell Dad you're like, man, this female's doing this, this, and this, and yeah, that's your job. So you love to hunt, and what are you looking for when you're to bring that kind of report home? Say this is a keeper, this isn't. What are you looking for? You didn't think this was going to be a cakewalk, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, How important is accuracy to you? Really important. When you're walking through this country, it better be. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. The, these mountains aren't fun to walk to slick trees. Yeah. That's why I don't hunt a walker dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, accuracy. Uh Track speed is a big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, a mouth, because if they get through the country here, six hundred yards through this country puts you in can put you in a pretty deep holler pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. The uh, leaves are on. You're not going to hear them. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, what about hunt? What about hunt drive? That's that's a big one. Do you want a dog in this country that's just, I mean, what do you, describe, just, 
what female do you like hunting the most right now? Uh, Miss Rambo. Miss Rambo. Okay. Describe to me, if we take her down the road here and turn her loose, how she's going to hunt this big timber. Because we're talking thousands and thousands of unbroken acres of timber between here and Nashville. What's that? The, if you head that way, I think there's 3,000 acres. Yeah. 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 And if you get if you get down south of Lake, there's twenty three thousand acres. <laughs> yeah, with the Dean Wilderness and stuff like that. Yeah. But but describe what Miss Rambo is going to do. Uh, just walk us through a hunt. She's definitely not a blowout of the country dog. She's a. Uh, you're going to turn her loose, and if it's on a Monday night and you're hunting by yourself. She's going to go through there. She's going to take the first track, and she's going to get treated quick. Mm -hmm. Now, you turn her loose in a cast with four other dogs, she's a little different. She's going to shoot in there. Mm -hmm. and So, on Monday on Monday night, she's going to, she's going to just kind of – she's not going to kick gravel in your face. Yeah. She's just going to slide in there and do her thing. Yep. Okay. And how far will she go to get, get a coon tree? Ah. Uh, I've walked two and a half miles to her. But will she this. come back to you? Yeah. She will come back? Well, if if, if, I, she does, if I call her back. If she doesn't strike a track, is she going to, you know, is, or is she going to keep hunting? She's going to keep hunting. You're going to catch her. Yeah. But you can call her back. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've seen, I've seen dogs like you described Monday night, <laughs> you know, they just kind of slide through there and then they know. When you when you go to the hunt oh, yeah, and all the atmosphere, those next level dogs find that next gear on the, on hunt night, you know, on game night. Yeah, she's she's totally different dog. Like, I guess I don't get her out of the pen much during daylight. Mm -hmm. And you go clip her up when the sun's still up. She knows it's. Well, you take you haul them. Yeah, you take them to the club. All those other dogs are there. They know what's going on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the ones that don't shouldn't be there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> a big plus about Miss Rambo is you can have a four-dog cast, and you can cut them down the side of a cornfield. And if there's a coon 20 feet away, she'll tree that coon that's 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. And those other dogs are blowing on in there. And he's won a lot of hunts like that to where – you treat three coons going to the other dogs, but if there's no coon there, she'll go. Mm -hmm. She'll go right with them. But if there's a coon there, she's going to tree it. Yeah. Will she tree with other dogs out of the truck? Like, oh, will yeah. she tree? Oh, yeah. Will she cover other dogs late in the hunt? If needed, she doesn't have anything going on. She, uh, or she, is she going to be treed first, and other stuff's going to cover her. You're hunt. You're campaigning her. I don't. Want, yeah. I don't. Want, <laughs> yeah. We don't want. To, we don't want to let all the trade secrets out. But uh, yeah, she she will cover another dog, but it's not to a point where it's a downfall mm -hmm. of her. She. Uh, yeah. How much? How much of? So, are you guys basing your your stock of females out here with what you can accomplish in a competition? Kuna. No. Brian, you say no? No Why way. No way. I want a dog I can take through the week mm -hmm. and be happy with through the week. Yeah. But it better be good enough to go and go to town. So you wouldn't breed some crazy thing that could, could win every, that that's just on a hot streak winning everything? No, not for me. I'm breeding for me. Mm -hmm. I'm not breeding for anybody else. Yeah. And if somebody else wants to buy a puppy, that's fine. Right. But I'm not breeding to please anybody else or win the world hunt or anything like that. I mean, if we do, that's great and i feel like we have the talent or or whatever you want to call it to do that but that's not what i'm shooting for that's that's kind of always how you know i've looked at it too it's i remember there's one female this was a plot female a buddy of mine had that was a really nice really nice dog and uh she was a natural starting dog i was actually going to try to make her a, a night champion without ever killing a coon to her she was just a natural you know, and um, she was a young dog when I got her, and I hunted her <clears throat> all the way into November, and then I couldn't take it. I had to kill a coon. <laughs> I, I, I was shooting them for me, not her. <laughs> but uh, uh, she was the type of dog that 
that I saw what she was and knew that she could be something, but I knew she would never be anything. I felt like we were obligated to get that female out there into the world, you know, and, and expose her and use her to, to breed and better the breed or whatever you want to call it. But right. do you feel that obligation as a breeder? Or I know you like the competition, huh, right? Oh, yeah. And how about you? Are you competition hunting anymore? No, uh-uh. no, I can't take it. And wh- why not? I just temperament or yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone goes trying to stretch and bend the rules. I don't like it a whole lot. That's the way I am anymore. I just I think, man, eh, I have a lot better time. I'd rather, I'd rather. I don't need a scorecard to tell me what a good dog is, no. and I don't need to be in that cast to recognize a good dog. And I have no, I have, I have no objection to whoever wants to go do that. But there's a lot of good horsemen and a horseman that that train horses for the Kentucky Derby that have never ridden in a derby, you know. And um, I think it's we're getting to that point in our sport where it's starting to separate a little bit. You got the dog men that that do a lot of the work. You look at, well, you can name a bunch of them that. They'll they'll competition hunt a little bit and they can do it, but the real value is training these dogs for these guys to go out and competition hunt. Yeah, yeah. And more power to them. Oh yeah, I mean it's whatever makes you happy. The yeah. only person that dog's got to please is you. Because Connor, I bet you wouldn't hunt right now. I bet you your hunt would slow da- down a lot if you weren't com- if you couldn't competition hunt. If you couldn't go the hunts on Friday and Saturday. Uh, to a certain point, because with my job right now, I can't go Friday and Saturday anyway. Right. But if you took competition off the table, would you would you hunt as hard as you do? Because I see your Facebook post at four, oh, yeah. 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, you're out there getting after when you can get out there and get after. Yeah. I never was. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, man. What, I had to have a goal, you yeah. know, and, and something that I was working towards in order to keep me going every night. I mean, I loved it, and I still do. Um, and during bear season, it's every day. You know, I'll go every day I can get get to the woods. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't take days off when I go to New Mexico and places like that. We're hunting. But uh, coon hunting is just what has always been one of those things where – I guess because I did it my whole life, and now I'm running around, and I'm starting to shift back a little bit. I'm starting to come back to my roots and coon hunting because I got it right here. I don't have to drive six hours to go. I don't have to drive six hours to go tree a coon. I can do it right out my back door. But it's not for it's not for the competition side. There's a lot of guys like that. I I talked to uh, Mike Ayers. I had the Batman dog down in Kentucky. I asked him on the podcast if 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 you couldn't competition, how would you still coon hunt? And he's like, probably not like I do, you know, <laughs> you know. So, but um, what what do you guys hope for the future here? I mean, what do you what do you you got a bunch of young pups out there? You got Miss Rambo right now. What's she qualified for right now? Uh, tournament of champions. She. TOC, yep. is she a PKC pup? No, she Miss Rambo was out of um, Pepper Blackman's Grits female. That okay, was on the reproducers list yep. for, and we you know bred her to Bobo semen, mm-hmm. and uh, only one female in the litter. Pepper wanted you know the deal was that I wanted a female. Pepper's a super stand up guy. Yeah, cause he let me have that female out of that litter. Really glad he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know if I'm spinning my wheels, you know, reading the good females back to the semen or not, but it seems to be working. Yeah. So she's out of she's out of Bobo semen and Pepper Blackman's female? Grits, yes. Grits. Yes. Yeah, I forgot that dog's name. So, so Grits was out of a male dog, first litter. Out of Bobo and Ann. Mm-hmm. So, bred her back to her grandpa. Yeah. And keep going and 
She'll be your own grandma. <laughs> 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 well, the the plan is to breed her to. She should be coming in heat any day. Yeah, to breed her to uh, Jeremy Smiley's thief dog, which that whole litter was pretty outstanding. I, you know, I might have to edit that out and make some side deals after. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure I get a pup out of this. Yeah, yeah. I think it ought to be in high demand. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So down the road, I mean, Connor, you plan on carrying this stuff on? And oh yeah, yeah. It's Brian, not- you're younger than I am, so I mean, you're not you're not anywhere close to you know being out of the game by any means. So I think I'm out of the game. Why? <laughs> Out of the competition game anyway. Well yeah. Yeah, but not as far as the coon hunting and the and the breeding and stuff like that. No, no. I I plan on trying to keep what we got. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What separates this line of dogs I mean, why not go with an English dog or a black and tan or we know why we're not hunting walkers because everybody everybody does that, you know. Well, I'm I made up my mind when I was young, you know. To, to find the best dogs I could find. And and the blue ticks and, suited you. Well, yeah, they were just down the road. You know, Kevin had Frosty, and, and I was going with somebody that maybe didn't have the best dog at the time, and we were treeing one or two coons a night, and I went with Kevin, and we treed 10 coons. Right. And so I was pretty well amazed at the end of the night, and I, I said, do you... You treat 10 coons every night you go. He said, no, a lot of time we treat 12 or 15. <laughs> well, then I thought he was lying to me. Right, know? right. And uh, so I started hunting with Kevin, and that was it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had any other kind, any other breed of dog here on this place? When I first started, I did. I went through a lot of dogs Yeah. when I was yeah. younger. But once once I got blue dogs, that's that's been it. Yeah. They've just worked. They've worked. They've suited you. They've been good to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've kept a good dog for 30 years mm-hmm. out of the same stuff. Yeah. And that's hard to do. Right. On a small scale like I got. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, I don't have people hunting dogs for me and order, you know, the money. That is tough. Donnie and I have had, Donnie Walsh and I have had this conversation several times, you know, to really, to really optimize a breeding program. It takes several people, you know, working together. And we've always, you know, that network that you can you can tap into, getting pups to the right people, you know, to make sure that you got something to go out and find. How many people call and it's like, oh, I want to, I want a pup out of this, and then you never hear from them again. You never hear anything out of them, and then you find out the pup sat in the kennel for fourteen months, and and they didn't do anything with them, and that's just aggravating to me. Well, that's a high percentage of your puppies that do, that, that happens to. You. It's aggravating. It's a shame. It's a lot of work. A lot of work that goes, you know, for nothing. You know, the only dogs I've had to call out of, that I've bred the last few years are ones that came back to me. Everyone that, that, and I'm not saying I'm a super trainer or anything like that, but I think there's something to, you know, when you're breeding the dog and you see those traits come out you you're ready to invest in it whereas somebody that just might think they want to pup out of this dog because they hear people talking about it they're not really invested so they're not as committed whereas when you're breeding your own stuff and you're hunting your own stuff um i think you can get you can get a little bit kennel blind at times you know i'm guilty of that myself and i like getting honest honest outside opinions but but um, I just don't call as many dogs anymore that I keep. Right. That right. I keep and I raise and I put my hands on. Or I get out to, you know, Don is a good, good at st- starting young dogs. We got several, a few guys down our way that'll do it. And I know people other places that'll take them and, and do good by them. Have you got a network like that? Raising puppies and selling puppies is, is kind of how I think. I'm keeping my dogs out there, mm-hmm. you know. Um, Connor's got some buddies, you know, that are hunting them. And Greg Fender, he had Uncle Penn. Mm-hmm. His his boys are hunting now. So. That's a great name, too, Uncle Penn. Yeah, yeah. he had it picked out. I, um, I bred Fancy 
to her half brother, which was kind of dangerous, I guess. But uh, he was out of Broadaxe Max and mm-hmm. Frosty, and then Fancy was out of Rambo Two and Frosty, and uh, it was like December the eighth or something, and. She had him in the laundry room downstairs, and Greg was the first person over here, you know, the night that they were born. He picked, yeah. he picked him out first night. No way. Yeah. Well, he's still wet laying there on the... Yeah. Yeah. It was meant to be, because he was hunting walker dogs at the time. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, yeah, he's, you know, natural, started young, and big mouth, and, and all that, and so we had Bobo and Uncle Penn at the same time, mm-hmm. and... They were both night champions, I think, at the time when we ran an ad, you know, in the bloodlines, and everybody would show up, and everybody would always breed to Bobo. <laughs> really? Pin was, was he a, a better dog, better looking dog, Bobo? Big time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Pin. Pin Pen had the tools, but <laughs> he just wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw him. Did, was he like half faced, or do you have bad feet in, on him, or? Like I say, we doubled up on Frosty. Frosty was a white female. Yeah. And yeah. And it was it was just something that, that I knew what we were gonna get, but I knew we were gonna get the talent. You know, get the there's a side by side. Well, he's not that white. He's not any whiter than big country. No, no, he's not. He's not. But <laughs> I was I mean, expecting something to look like a cloud out there. <laughs> <laughs> he he didn't have the best feet. But, My jazz uh, female didn't either. She didn't have good feet. But uh, the thing I've noticed about. And he was a bigger dog. Bobo was pretty compact. Mm-hmm. He is yeah. bigger and taller. Where do you think that size comes from? When you start looking at that, like country. Well, it, I mean, hawk, crash, and, hawk and rock and had the size but the country dogs are big they are they're big mm-hmm. <laughs> where does it come from does it come from robert's side or does it come from the rambo size it come from the bocephus it come from sadie a little bit i mean there was a reason why they called her a little bit mm-hmm. she was a little bitty old dog so but i mean heather was big and most of those dogs out of that cross was big but i don't know if that's Man, look at that tough guy. All muscled up, buff. Yeah, that's been a while. <laughs> Who's that? Greg Fender. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that looks typical of the, uh, you know, the. But I mean, night for night, you just, they, they traded right off. You yeah. Know, they were the same caliber of dog. Mm-hmm. And Greg got in an accident and got hard up for some money because he wasn't, wasn't able to work. And Scott Bannon Hoovel bought pin i think greg put him on the ukc message board and sold him in like three minutes really <laughs> yeah yeah wish i'd have seen it well i think he put him on at like midnight and he some was, some fa- some internet lurker was waiting for him to well van scott van Hoodle, yeah uh-huh yeah, he he's from wisconsin but good dude good dude yeah oh yeah yep what else we got to talk about? Donuts? This this organic milk from <laughs> Twin Springs Dairy? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Right down the road here. It's all organic, grass-fed. I, yeah, I don't. I'm just chewing donuts. That's all I'm doing. Drinking uh, coffee and chewing donuts. Connor said like 10 words the whole podcast. Well, I'm hogging, I'm hogging the stage. Yeah. We talked a little bit when you stepped outside, but. uh, No, Connor, he's the driving force right now. You know, mm -hmm. he's keeping it going. Trying my best. Yeah. He's had some, had some good wins with her. He got second place at Autumn Oaks registered when she was younger. Yeah. uh, How old is she now? She just turned four. Just turned four. Is she a grand night? One win. One win to grand? Yep. Okay. Yep. What other up and comers you got out there? What's your next big what's your next big project? Next big hopeful. We got a couple male dogs out of Bobo, Seaman, mm-hmm. and the sugar female, which was off a of big country and goes back to the Remy female of Perry Metcalfs. Yeah. And uh 
they both are very potential to, to be big mouths, big, big motors, mouse, good looking, a little bit bigger dogs than I like. Right. But, uh, but they both got some potential. Connor's got a really nice young dog out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to get together and go hunting with them one night and see what we can come up with. That'd be fun. Well, I'm going to wrap this one up, fellas. I appreciate you taking time to, to sit down and, and uh, talk about that Bobo, you know, influence that we've had in Fuse. He just, keep, he just keeps popping up, and then the frosty stuff. and Yeah, Bobo cleaned everything up, a lot of the bad habits from – that weren't enough really to, to call anything it's you know there was a little bit of chewing mm -hmm. you know there was a little bit of maybe off game stuff going on and and bobo you know i said so kevin had bought face off of lonnie we were down there and face she didn't chew she was a hard chop mouth tree dog you know yeah. and then they had Rambo 3, and he was super fast. I mean, get treated right now fast. And I had never really hunted with anything that could be fancy on a track. Yeah. Anything. And he did it maybe three times in one night. Beat her to the tree. And I thought, my gosh. Well, she was getting older. She was probably 10 years mm -hmm. old, you know. And uh, I said, you know, I got to have a pup out of him and and because kevin said he was breeding him to face so to so, face yeah and bobo he cleaned up a lot of that you know no chewing no tree jacking no off game nothing he was just he was you know get a pad and paper and write down what you want in a dog and that you was liked him it. yeah he wasn't you know he didn't scratch and throw gravel at you he didn't he wasn't possessive over female mm -hmm. uh you know, when I was breeding him a lot, I'd get stud fee puppies. I'd just throw the puppies in the pen with him <laughs> when I'd get them. Yeah. And, and they could eat with him, and he'd, you know, pretty well watch over them. Yeah. He was just, you know, great to have around the house. I got a male and, plot. Like, my, my Cajun dog is like that right now. You know, I can just put stuff in there with him, and he he just babysits. Yeah, he's just, but, he's also a good dog. But a dog you're breeding to 15 or 20 females, you know, that's that's hard to come by. Sure it is, yeah, for sure. But he he could breed a female, just you know, lickety split. He was just the best at everything. Yeah. What was his full name? Uh, Frosty Blue Bobo. Yeah. yeah. I just want to make sure we get it out there. So I mean, nobody should get Bobo confused, but there's so much bow running around these days. <laughs> <laughs> bow knows. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I, man, we could sit here and talk for hours about about traits and hounds and what we're looking for and different stuff. But I just like, do you realize that Indiana has produced more world champions? Oh yeah, than any other state in the United States. The only one that's close is Ohio, and they're like twenty or thirty behind us or something like that. Wow. I think I think Missouri Missouri's up there too, but. But Indiana's a powerhouse, and, and we're right here in Indiana, and we get overlooked a lot of times. But there's been so many dogs that have, have uh, even Western big game hunters, you know, the Lester Nance dogs, the the um, Rambo dogs are being used on for big game hunters now, the coon hunting, all of it. I got so, I got a lot of bear hunters that – that have got pups and most of the puppies I sell are people that I've already sold puppies to. Yeah. You know, yeah. they want another one. Right. Yeah. Cause there is something to being able to pick that head up and move that track out and get going. You know, you can't put enough pressure on a bear to put it up if they can't, if they can't catch up to him. So you can take all the cold nose grubbing, whatever you want, but bear will walk all day. Yeah. Keep yeah. on walking. If if he doesn't have enough speed behind him to catch up and put some pressure on him, so well, guys, I appreciate you taking time to to sit down on the Houndsman XP podcast. Thank you for coming over. Yeah. Oh Thank yeah, you. my pleasure. We'll get together and go hunting for sure. 
So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the Houndsman XP podcast. Make sure you're checking out all of our merchandise and everything over on houndsmanxp.com. We just dropped our Elite Nutrition product line there. I'm telling you that's a game changer. If you guys haven't tried Elite Nutrition, I'll, I'll give you the whole pitch when we're done. But uh, uh, it's a game changer. The Essential Dog is is the real deal. And uh, you can check that and all our merchandise out over on houndsmanxp.com. Join us on Patreon for more bonus material. Until next time, thanks for tuning in to the Houndsman XP Podcast. This is Fair Chase.